Hello, I'm Annette Young and welcome to this special edition coming to you from Dakar in Senegal. In the last decade, tens of millions of young African women have taken up modern contraception. Yet in many countries such as this one, sex outside marriage is still very much taboo, making the fight for reproductive rights that much more difficult. She calls herself the keeper of family secrets. Married to Dow as a 60-year-old grandmother, she's also what the Senegalese call a Badinao Gok or neighbourhood aunt, these women teaching their community about contraception. In Peking, one of the poorest districts of Dakar, this government-backed program has been in existence for some 10 years. They say that a neighbourhood aunt has to have big eyes, like this, big ears, but a little mouth to be discreet. <laughs> Some believe that if you're breastfeeding your child, you won't fall pregnant. Others carry talismans and believe this will stop them from getting pregnant. Like many African nations, Senegal has a very young population, with 32% under the age of 24. On average, women have more than four children. It's also a culture very much shaped by traditional beliefs and where men still have the final say, especially when it comes to the use of contraception. We're in Rufsik, a small town just east of Dakar. The local health clinic is holding a vaccination day for infants while also promoting family planning, this time using an amateur theatre group to make sure the message is heard. Family planning isn't meant to stop births, but it's useful for spacing them out. OK, I get it. Now I'm taking my wife home. Watching and laughing are women and children on one side, with community and religious leaders on the other. Yet the mayor and the local imam are still not 100% behind the message. These are decisions that are taken together. But when we talk about authority within the family, it's the man who has it. And I think that's normal and natural. We're not against it, but sometimes it gives ideas that contradict our religion. We're on the road to Mimboro, a small town two hours north of Dakar. In Senegal, one third of women have had at least one child before they turn 19. We're here to meet the family of a tribal historian who has two wives and ten children, including an unmarried daughter who had a son at the age of 60. How did you react when you discovered your daughter was pregnant? I was very hurt. I wasn't happy. But we went to the hospital and decided to keep the child. Now, I don't want her to go out anymore. I restrict her outings. That's how things are these days. When I was a child, you couldn't wake up in the morning and not greet your father. Nor could you go outside without his permission. And you had to report back to him as to your whereabouts when you came back. Now things are different even if it's not what we want. Do you know about contraception? No. Who can tell you? She doesn't know. I don't know. Senegal is a predominantly Muslim country. While some imams accept family planning, others are openly critical. Such as Aliou Sal, a highly influential preacher who's growing in popularity thanks to his radio programs and his ever-growing network of Quranic schools. What is your position in regards to contraception and, in fact, family planning? According to the foundations of Islam, relationships between men and women must stick to clear basis. Marriage must come before any sexual relationship. We don't provide sex education to those underage, unless they're about to get married. Do 
Here in Senegal, there's a large number of women who work, particularly when they're married. They don't want to have large families. If they come to seek advice from you, what would you tell them? My position is no contraception. God created women to have children for as long as they can, until the menopause. That's the only valid form of contraception. So just how difficult is it to get the message across, especially for such a complicated and sometimes controversial issue? We're here on the set of C'est la Vie, or That's Life in English, a Senegalese co-production that uses the classic TV soap opera format in order to get people talking. Let's go and meet some of the crew. This popular series is broadcast across French-speaking West Africa. One of its stars is 25-year-old Mohamed Keta. Mohamed, are you a feminist? Yes, I'm a feminist. Why? Because I want my mother to be proud of me. That's all it is. When I see these brave women fighting, I want to be like them. I want to help them, thanks to my image, thanks to my voice and my influence. I want to be with these women. I want to help carry their fight. I want to impact my community and to change mentalities within it. But just how far can this show actually go in talking about what essentially are still taboo subjects? Sex is a level. And uh, what I have discovered over the last few years is that uh, many uh, officials, uh, but as well as uh, grassroots uh, uh, organisations, are fine with discussing things that are related to sexuality as long as you don't label it sexuality. That evening, some of the cast head to the studio of Vibe Radio to take part in an on-air debate about sex. Ce n'est pas toujours évident pour les jeunes des fois de manière open de parler de sexualité ou comme nous on le dit hein, de parler de chiki chiki bang. When you need to do something like move your body like this. The conversation very quickly turning to the notion of abstinence versus the reality of day-to-day -day life. A lot of women start having sex without knowing what the consequences can be. Both partners must be informed and consenting. For them to feel the natural need to have sex is very normal. It's not a crime. Okay, yeah. All right. Abstinence is what they want to sell to people, to say, we're Muslims and our religion and tells us we can't have sex, and that's clear. They tell you, which means don't have sex outside of marriage for us Muslims. The reality is that people, or young people, can't or don't even understand the word abstinence. What we should work on is explaining to them the consequences of having sex without planning it. I think that's legitimate. The reality of what's happening here is that we're too secretive. So young people are curious, and there's too much damage. In Senegal, family planning consultations are, in principle, offered free of charge in all medical centres. The Peking Mothers and Babies Clinic, the staff find themselves on the front line in the battle to promote contraception. But for this 24-year-old teacher, a consultation is nothing to be ashamed of. On the contrary, it's about taking control of your destiny. It gives young women more autonomy so that they will at last have the same rights as men here in Senegal. So how do men react to this? Well, they don't agree with it. Maybe they're just jealous. But I think we can get there all the same. Because girls today are so brave, I think they will manage to succeed in the end. Often, clinic staff have to deal with far more serious cases, such as treating women whose clandestine abortions have gone wrong or taking care of rape victims, who are frequently young girls. For every 10 girls, we usually find maybe two or three who've been sexually abused. It happens at home or at school. It happens between school children themselves or between teachers and pupils.
In January, Senegal's parliament voted to criminalise rape, which until then had been viewed as a minor crime. The new law setting a minimum of 10 years jail for those found guilty. A victory for women's groups who long campaigned for the law to be changed. There have been a lot of rape cases, particularly in certain parts of Senegal. And these rapes are often dealt with within families. And the victim isn't always supported by the system. As for women's rights, we have plenty of laws. But when it comes to taking care of victims, a lot of work remains to be done. And that's it for this special edition coming to you from Dakar in Senegal. So until our next show, bye for now.